Let's imagine you have set out on a journey to create your own score inspired design, such as a C90. And the C90 is essentially a crossing between a C51 and the C101, these two models from our design lines. So it has the regular 13 buttons. It has the slider, uh, the 13 buttons are from this one and the slider is from a uh, 101 and then in fact it has also the smart switches right here plus it's based on an Arduino Mega which you can see here sitting on the back side. The C90 is characterized by having all connections and um, user um, uh, handled functionality on the front side nothing on the back side. But anyway from the hardware design to the software implementation. How do you go that route? And this is what I will walk you through here. My idea was to copy paste from existing functionality found in the sketches for other models. So I'll start out by the C51. Um, it could also be useful to just confirm the fact that it actually communicates with the ATEM switches. So the very first thing I'll do is to set up the MAC and IP address. Um, quickly, to do that, you have the Arduino IDE open. You use config Ethernet addresses right there. And then you enter the MAC address of the product, which in this case is 23 DC here. The IP address of the product, I want that to be, yeah, 99 is fine. I want it to be zero because my ATEM switcher, whoops, sorry. My ATEM switcher has the IP address 50 and 1, like that. So I go select my board, it's the right board. The serial port is this one and I upload the sketch. So it's compiling, uploading in a moment and we'll confirm by the serial monitor that everything worked. So by the serial monitor you'll see, okay, this is the IP address of the device, the ATEM switcher, so and so and so. Great. And um, then I should be able to uh, also do a basic test here. Um, and now I, for this particular sketch, I would need to re-enter the numbers. That is uh, not the case with the newer version of the library. But <coughs> here I need to. Uploading. using the serial monitor to confirm. Yes, so what we see right here is a confirmation that it's communicating with the ATEM switcher. Well, so far so good. I'm able to program the device. It communicates with my ATEM switcher. I'm happy. So next step is to uh, get started using a sketch for a C50 right here. And look at what we have inside. Actually, I would say that um, by just uploading this one, we should have functionality in, in the um, 13 buttons right away. So I think we are going to try that, just checking that everything is, is right and we use the upload function. There we go. Open the serial monitor as well. First of all, we see that the IP addresses are correct as we entered them. And if we look at the front of the panel, if we do another reset of the unit by pressing the reset button, and if we look at the front, we can see the buttons are initializing and connected to the ATEM switcher. So when I press these buttons, we see that the, the same buttons are changed up here on a, another panel which is connected to the ATEM switcher. So we actually have that functionality right out of the box. Let's add functionality for the slider in the middle. So essentially what the T-bar on this uh, 101 model does, just put these aside. So um, we then go to the sketch for a C101, like this one. And um, there's a lot to scroll past. In fact, I suggest that we search for the word slider. So um, here we find a few clues. We have to, first of all, initialize the slider. So in the in the setup function of the sketch, see, so just convince you that we are in the setup function, and it's a large one for this sketch. You can see setup here. 
So in the setup function, somewhere down there, we search for slider and we find these two functions. Let's search on and we find that further down in the source code, we have this little part which uh, checks if the slider has moved. If it has moved, then it will send the transition position to the ATEM switcher. Wait a little bit and then check if the slider is at the end of a transition, in which case it will send this command. And uh, much of that is actually found in a sketch called T-bar. So we could also go the more simple route and simply look inside this sketch what is uh, apparently necessary. Well, actually, we need to include this library first of all. If we don't do that, we uh, will not have access to the features operating the T-bar. So in the uh, sketch for the C90, which I'm now going to save and call C90, and this is being saved on my desktop for this demonstration, we first include the library. So we could do it right there. And going back to the T-bar sketch, copy, paste. So that was copy-paste actions with keyboard shortcuts. I guess I don't need to demonstrate that more closely. And then uh, we have initialization of the slider right here. And those parameters are sort of optional. Uh, if you give them, it tells um, these are the default parameters. And if you looked at the C101 sketch, just looking for the slider again, you see that uh, these two lines doesn't add them. And I think I'll just use those instead. So I scroll past these things. And then just before we initialize the ATEM switcher down here, I'll just place these lines. So I just copied them with the keyboard shortcut and paste them in now like that. OK, so um, that was the init line. I guess this one has moved is sort of a part of the initialization as well, uh, which was in the C100 sketch. Now, um, then we, uh, yeah, we used the T-bar sketch because it was simpler. And in the sketch, you find that um, this line command, this patch will uh, call this function down here, which has this code. So why not just copy this function? It seems kind of nice. So to encapsulate it like that, um, I suggest then we copy this over and paste it into the bottom of the document like that. And then we call it slider handling like that. And the function itself should be called slider handling. T-bar slider, it doesn't matter. It's uh, the same to this uh, system. And then what we need to do is to call this function up in the main loop. And the main loop is what is getting called over and over again, starting here. These first parts of the, of the source code from here up to here deals with a sort of recovery for the ATEM connection if the connection is lost, etc. But if the connection is initialized, we are looking at this, um, this code. So uh, first of all, it handles the button colors of the 13 buttons. It also handles the button's input. And then we call slider handling like that. So let's try to compile it. It's done compiling, meaning we have no errors. So then we upload. And we can now turn our attention to whether or not the um, the, the slider is going to work. This is going to be a bit difficult to see because we don't have any input sources over there on the um, uh, ATEM switcher, but I'm going to bring up the ATEM control panel. There we go. So um, basically what we should see now is that the slider is moving up and down when I'm moving the slider on the front. So now I'm moving the slider on the front and we can see the slider is also moving in the software like this. So that's how easy it is ideally to mix and match the different components of the software written for different SCOHA units. Sometimes it's a bit more difficult, but generally I feel that the, the overall amount of sketches we have already for the different units is relatively easy to mix and match in this way to create functionality for custom models like this one. So basically we have the buttons in place, we have the slider in place.